Now that you've received your 448 wood pantry, you'll notice that there's a production label located right here on the front. Please keep this for your records if you ever need to refer back to the model number or even the production date in case you need to contact our customer service department. Now let's go ahead and open our box and see what we have. Now that we have the 448 wood pantry out of the box, I want to go over some of the components that should be in your kit. First of all, we're going to have your adjustable shelves. You're going to have your bottom shelf assembly. You're going to have your heavy duty slide assembly. Then you're going to have your floating back plate. You'll have your two wood rails and of course your front and back panels. You're also going to have three hardware bags. You're going to have your step-by-step -step instruction booklet. And last but not least, you will have your template so you can mount your slide assembly in the bottom of your cabinet. In order to install your 448 tall pantry correctly, you're going to need a few tools. First, you're going to need a 10 millimeter nut driver. You'll need a standard Phillips head screwdriver. You'll need a half inch spade bit, as well as a 9 64 drill bit. Of course, you'll need a drill gun with a Phillips head bit, tape measure, a straight edge, some scotch tape, which will help hold your template in place. And last but not least, we supply an Allen wrench, but you'll need that also. Now we're ready to assemble our 448 pantry. To begin, I went ahead and I've grabbed our bottom shelf assembly as well as our rear panel. One thing I like to point out is that you'll notice the rear panel has the Revishelf logo on it, so you want to make sure you grab that one. We're going to begin by placing our dowels, but before we do that, you want to make sure that the dowels are going into the rear of the shelf assembly. And then next, we'll take our back panel, and it's easy if you go ahead and put this up on its side, and then the bottom shelf will then press fit into the rear of the frame. Next, you'll grab your drill with your Phillips head bit and grab four number eight by two screws and we'll go ahead and screw those into place. Next time I'm gonna grab our two wood rails and we will begin by installing the supplied dowels. Then we will place these right into the back panel. Then we'll take four of our number eight by two screws and we'll secure the rails. Next, we're going to grab one of our wood shelves. Now, depending upon your particular application, you can either install your wood shelf above or below your wood rails. Since we have decided to install this in this position, it is much easier to go ahead and install it now versus later when your frame is already assembled. Next, we're going to grab our front panel and our remaining four dowels, and then we'll begin by placing our dowels in our shelf assembly. And then we will place our front panel onto the frame and then press into place. Now that we have the front panel pressed into place, we're going to grab our number eight by two screws and we'll screw that into place. Then we will grab our number eight by one with our number eight washer and install that. Next, we're going to grab one of our wood shelves. As an option for added stability, we recommend that you go ahead and install this and permanently affix it with the screws provided. Next, we're gonna grab our floating back plate. Now, a little insulation tip is you wanna make sure that these slots are towards the bottom of your frame. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our quarter by 20 by one inch flathead mach machine screws in. Go ahead and put our floating plate on. Then we'll go ahead and put our tapered barrel nut on. And then we'll go ahead and tighten. Now we're ready to install our slide assembly. The easiest way to do that is to go ahead and flip your pantry over. And then we'll grab our top mounting plate. Now to install the slide mounting plate correctly, you need to make sure that it's facing correctly. Now since we have the front of the cabinet right here, we need to make sure this hook is facing to the rear. So we'll go ahead and place that. Now you will take eight number 10 by one deep thread screws and you'll go ahead and line your mounting plate up with the pre-drilled holes and simply begin by screwing those into place. 
Now we're ready to install our heavy duty slide system. We're gonna go ahead and take our supply template that's included in your kit, and we're gonna go ahead and lay this into the cabinet. You'll notice that it actually has a uh, line drawn on your template that says front of cabinet. Literally, you wanna lay this down to the front opening of your cabinet. Now this works for both frameless and face frame applications. Now if you are installing this into an inset door application, you'll need to compensate for the thickness of your door and push that template back just a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and tape this into place and we'll go ahead and begin to drill our pilot holes. Now that we've pre-drilled our pilot holes, let's go ahead and remove our template. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna grab two of your snap toggles and we'll go ahead and insert these into the half inch holes that we have drilled in the back. And then you will gently move down your snap plug and simply bend the plastic posts back and forth until they snap off. Now that our pilot holes and our snap toggles are in place, we're ready to install our heavy duty slide. Now, for most face frame applications, you wanna make sure that the slide feet are pulled all the way to the back of the face frame. Then you're gonna take your two supplied quarter by 20 by two inch machine screws and you will install this into the rear, then followed by your two supplied number 10 by one inch screws. Before we install our 448 pantry into our cabinet, you're gonna need to install your rub bushings. Now you need to refer to your instruction manual to determine the exact height and location of your rub bushings as well as the exact thickness you'll need to use. Now that we have our rub bushings in place, we're now ready to begin placing our 448 on top of our slide. We'll go ahead and move our slide out of the cabinet and we'll pick up our 448 and we will set that down and we'll push that into the cabinet to engage it. Now it's engaged, now we can pull it all the way back out. Next we're going to grab our supplied Allen wrench and our two black set screws. Now you'll notice on either side of the pantry there are two access holes. That's where you'll insert those and tighten into place. These set screws are also micro adjusters that will allow you to center the slide either left or right depending on how you tighten or loosen them. Our next step is that we're going to go ahead and push our pantry back into the cabinet. The first thing you'll notice is that our pantry cabinet is not lined up with our face frame. It's actually tilting into the cabinet. So what we need to do is we need to remove our pantry and we need to install these two adjustment screws into the rear of the cabinet. Now when you tighten these down, this will actually bring the pantry forward, which will then align it up with your face frame. Now that we've adjusted our pantry, we can now tighten our middle locking bolt. What this does, this will actually draw the pantry and the slide together so there's no chance of the pantry actually coming off the slide. Now that our 448 is securely attached to our slide, we're now ready to begin adjusting our floating back plate. You begin by loosening these two screws a quarter of a turn. This will allow you to gently slide your floating back plate up so it is a quarter of an inch below the top of your cabinet. Next you will tighten your two screws that will hold your floating back plate in place. Then you will take your supplied number eight by one inch deep thread screws and insert those into the pre-drilled holes. Then you will finish by placing your two screw cover stickers. Now that our wood pantry is fully installed, we're ready to begin by attaching our cabinet door. Before we do so, you'll need to remove your pantry from the cabinet by using your 10 millimeter nut driver, you need to go ahead and loosen your door brackets. Now once these are loosened, you can adjust these out and then you will take these measurements and apply that to your cabinet door. Then you will securely attach the door to your unit. Now that our cabinet door is securely attached to our wood pantry, one of the things I like to point out is our patented adjustable door mounting brackets. These brackets will allow you to shift your door either left or right, depending on how you need to adjust it. Next you will take your supplied Allen wrench and you will go ahead and insert it into the plastic sleeve alongside with your instruction sheet that says consumer guide. These two components are very important if anyone ever needs to uninstall the pantry in the future. Now that our installation is complete, we're gonna grab our remaining adjustable shelves. Now depending upon your application and your needs, we'll determine how many shelves you wanna use in your unit. If for any reason you need to uninstall your pantry, you should go ahead and grab the consumer guide and the supplied Allen wrench. Now this should be attached somewhere on your pantry. First we'll begin by removing our two cover stickers so we can access the screws. 
Then we'll go below here and loosen this by one quarter of a turn. Then we will take our drill and remove these screws. Once your screws have been removed, you can start to slide down your back pan. Now we're going to move down to the bottom of the pantry. We're going to use our supplied Allen wrench to reach up under and we're going to pop out our cover caps. Now that our cover caps have been removed, we'll take our Allen wrench and we'll access our set screws through the access holes and we'll go ahead and completely loosen and remove those. Now that you've removed your two set screws, we're going to begin by loosening our locking bolt. Now this only takes about three to four turns. Now once you loosen that, if you feel it's starting to get tight, that's when you should stop. Now that your center locking bolt is loosened, you can now move to the rear of the pantry where you begin to remove the tilt and adjustment screws. Now to successfully remove the pantry from the slide system, you'll need to actually go underneath and disengage the slide. Now that our slide is disengaged, we can just simply lift up and remove our pantry.